So hi guys, I have another interview for you today with Jordan Miller. So Jordan, come. Hey, to. all right. So you have the newest core developer. How did that thing happen? How did you find out? Who nominated you? Well, so what happened was uh, I was really interested in uh, making sure that all the details in our scientific paper got back to the community, and the best place for that would be on the RepRap blog. Can you so, uh, can you describe what have you done? Yeah. So, um, well, we started a, a long time ago. Actually, we did a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I wrote this program called Skyfox, which was um, it was a Git repo manager for all your Skyforge profiles. That was like one oh. of my first contributions to our project. I didn't know that. Time ago. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had about 900 downloads of that thing, and then uh, we also did a heated build platform. We beat you by a couple weeks. To oh. the first working heated build platform for Rep. Yeah, but, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, how? how three first post, first post. <laughs> Back then, my heat bed was like two pieces of plexiglass with nichrome wire epoxy in the middle. How bad is that? <laughs> well, mine was the same. It was nichrome wire inside of a PDMS with a thermistor encased in there. So. Oh, uh, good times. Um, and then, you know, I've just been following RepRap and building a lot of stuff along the way. And then, uh, most recently, we did the sugar chocolate extruder. Yes. So we made a lot of mods to RepRap to be able to, to print that. And then we put that all back uh, online. So, um, for that paper, that scientific paper, I was really interested in getting the details back on the blog. So, I had asked Adrian, can I, can I blog this? And he had said, well, you know, just send me the details and I'll put on the blog for you. And I was like, well, you know, maybe I could get blog access because I'd really like to put a lot of details in. So uh, then I guess there was a vote. Uh, yes, I mean, probably yes. I don't, I'm not subscribed to all those. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I remember when it was me, uh, Forrest Hicks nominated me in the old case, it was, I guess, Adrian. And then guys voted for it. But hey, what does it mean for you when you are a core developer? Tell us. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. It changed my life. But I think uh, it's kind of like as you said. Um, it doesn't really mean much other yeah. than like in terms of the RepRap project and the evolution of the, the technology. Um, it's kind of uh, it's it's a nice feature. I'd love to blog. I, I have a vision of the stuff I would blog for RepRap would be only stuff that would be technically interesting, but also, you know, good. Oh. So, um, I think that's in the spirit of the Rep Rep blog. And, uh, so, what are your plans with your sugar strudel? I will put um, a photo of it into the video right now. All right, great. Um, so, our plans are really to get higher precision. So, we're really interested in the high precision Rep Rep uh, technology that people are coming out with. So some are doing really high-speed lead screws. Other people are doing, um, you know, I don't know. There, there's very complex, very expensive things that we could try to reverse engineer that are out there. Um, what do you so, mean exactly? Well, there's they're like a microscope stage is very, very high precision oh. and moves very fast and very accurate. Do you think accurate. that makes sense for FDM? Well, um, for the FDM, for the sugar stuff that we're trying to do, right now we, we're very limited in the, in the precision of the extrusion. So I think also there's the potential to modify, you know, this sugar shooter that we have is kind of a proof of principle. Um, it works all right, but it doesn't work ideally, right? It's still lower resolution than filament-based extrusion. Yes. So um, I think that there's technologies to do that, like a screw-based extruder, or there's the unfold extruder. Yes. Looking at that in terms of how we could add heat to that and make the tubing, uh, make the surface area very smooth. <laughs> Nothing can grow in there. Doesn't get animated. It's like food and uh, for stuff growing with cells, there are sterility concerns. Yes. are really important for the research that I'm doing. So I kind of see wrap wrap um, in terms of the high end, the high precision stuff. If we double the cost every year of the bot, we get higher precision. But then while still you know, keeping keeping the FDM, well, it is. Uh, I I think that. After I've seen how it evolves, like next year for same money you will get double precision. Yeah. So you don't need to invest much more. Yes, maybe we don't. 
Um, I, a lot of the stuff that, a lot of the upgrades that I'm focused on are about making it easy to sterilize. So that's why we could never do a wooden bot. Oh yeah. We could never do a laser cut um, bot. I guess oh. we could do acrylic, but um, I just was afraid of stuff shattering. So. Yeah. That's the things I've never thought of. So, what do you think about the actual FDM printers and other technologies? Can are other objects, for example, at least food safe? Um, how do you mean? Like, uh, if, if kid can take the thing into mouth and chew it, something like that. There are any residues or stuff. Uh, you mean that the, the sugar extruder we have now? No, I, I, I bet that the old sugar extruder is fine because it's glass and stainless steel. Right. But the other nozzles and plastics. Oh, I don't I don't know. The, I'm just starting to learn the, the regulations that control that. So the regulation bodies in different countries yeah. that, right, that say whether you can save food safe or not. I so, think that's the future, like we, somebody yeah. has to figure that out because now, like, yeah, yeah, you can use it, but I, I, for a long time I don't think so. Yeah, so what, what I found is, uh, the, a little bit I've looked into this, that um, the regulatory bodies, they don't certify the machine, they certify the cook or the chef. So that gives you some flexibility, but they can't inspect you at any time. So you have to get you have to get this certification degree to say that um, you understand food handling, food quality, insurance, okay. which is not too bad. But I think it's easier from my perspective. It's easier for me to just partner with somebody that already is that. So we're yes. talking to local chocolatiers in um, Philadelphia, but then we talked to a lot of people that came by the booth today that are professional chocolatiers here in New York and. Uh, there's one called, I think it was called Divalicious Chocolates, is also, she she plans chocolate events, so, wow. and there's like, there's chocolate conferences that I'm learning about now, so really? I think if Rep Rap like, had, a, had a presence there. Hidden uh, Universe. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, as core developer, I, I feel that I'm, I have to be cognizant of representing the Rep Rap community, not just my own project and my own yeah. opinion, so I try to do that. Um, I also. feel the same. And I think we did, you know, we got that MakerBot question during uh, your session. And I think we did a good job answering our, making clear is our opinion, but it's, this, is, this is why RepRap works. This is why a closed model doesn't work yes. in the future, for the future of their technology. Anyway, I think so. that, do you have something, some last remark you want to say? Um, just, again, thanks again to the whole uh, community because our project really uh, took off because everybody helped and jumped on board and was answering my, my crazy questions in uh, IRC. Yeah, they didn't I know why. And, um, but it was great because the whole Red Rap community was in the acknowledgement section. So um, I think it was really great for the whole community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you guys next time. Yeah.